Good morning. Uh, we are sitting over here in Clare, Michigan at the really nice service plaza or rest area. Really nice. We spent the night here. Nice and quiet. A lot of grass. Clean. Uh, right now, I'm trying to figure out where I gotta go. Uh, I use my GPS, but also I use Google Maps. I use the satellite view on Google Maps so I can see uh, the satellite picture of where I gotta go. And right now, the GPS and Google Maps don't match each other. So I'm trying to figure out uh, who's right. Um, so that is what I'm doing right now. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I, I see Google Maps here. Usually I trust Google Maps before I trust the GPS. Uh, just for the fact that I can see the satellite picture of the, of the route of where I got to go. So, um, so that's what we're gonna do. Is uh, let me uh, let me make a quick note of this real quick, just in case I don't have phone service when I get up there. So it, uh, let's see. I didn't mean to get too carried away. I want to just show you that that's how I find where I'm going. Um, I see a lot of guys just rely on GPS, and when if all else fails, I grab the map. The only thing about the big map is it, it doesn't get too detailed, so um, um, let's see here. It doesn't get too detailed on small places. Alright. Alright, I think we'll be okay though. I got enough in my head and I'll figure it out. Alright guys, um, easy day today. We got about 30 minutes up to where we gotta go to unload. And then, um, and then uh, we got about 100 miles over to where we reload, but our appointment's not till one o'clock. Now, I am, I did pick a load to St. Paul, and I called my dad last night. He always likes to know where I'm at and what I'm doing. And I talked to him, and I said, yeah, I'm going to St. Paul. And he said, and, and he said, oh, okay. And then uh, he was like, do you know there's a big snowstorm coming there? And then I got a lot of comments last night on the video when I said I was going to St. Paul that there was a, a lot of uh, a big snowstorm coming. So, oh well, I, I'll just deal with it. it you know, um, if uh, three quarters of a mile, keep left to US 127 North. If um, if it gets too bad, I just park it. You know, I'm not going to tear my truck up. So, uh, but we were looking at different routes to go. And uh, what I could do, the, the absolute shortest way from Michigan, where I'm at in Michigan, to where we gotta go, will be to run up uh, through Wisconsin and then come up that way. But I might, depending on the weather, and that's what I was looking at, was depending on the weather, I might just run the bottom side of, of our, not the bottom lanes. side, but, uh, but run through Iowa on uh, 80, and then cut straight up north uh, to St. Paul. Might be a little bit further, but it just kind of looks like maybe that snow band is, uh, isn't is quite as far down south down in Iowa. So, uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But, uh, all right guys, uh, yesterday was a great day. Today, I'm hoping it's gonna be a good day. Today should be a very simple day. Not much to do at all, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, talk to you guys in a bit. Uh, we're going to be there probably about, uh, well now we'll be there about 25, 30 minutes. Talk to you in a bit. Alright, I think we are pretty close to where we need to be. Let's see if I can just figure out where I'm supposed to turn in at and how I'm supposed to do this. Right there. So we're gonna go in right here. 
any out. So. this morning I ended up on a little tiny road so I was uh, probably not supposed to be on that road so we're gonna go back uh, the main road might be a little bit further but uh, that's the way we're gonna go so we're all in all right guys uh, talk to you in a little bit uh, when we get stopped Audio just gets terrible, so. All right, uh, let's give it a shot, see what happens. All right, uh, we got the tarps out. It's, uh, it's a little windy out here, a little noisy, a couple trucks riding by, so uh, we'll see if you can hear me, but uh, that's where I keep my tarps. 
<clears throat> in there. I already got one laid out. There it is. I already got one laid out on the ground right there. And uh, what I use is uh, um, vinyl cement and rubbing alcohol. And I use the rubbing alcohol to uh, clean it. It uh, helps the uh, cement stick a little bit better. And then uh, for patch material, all we use is uh, uh, all I use is an uh, old uh, piece of tarp. And uh, the Mercer store sells this stuff here. So, uh, so this here, we got a couple big holes. Like we got one big hole right there, and then we got a big, big one right here. See this right here? So, and that's from those auto lifts. And those are the main holes that I need to fix um, before I use this tarp here. So, so we got. Uh, here we go. We got Cali Dog. She's out there. Just getting some fresh air. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut the material for this, and then uh, I'll show you how I uh, glue it on there. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'll take the rubbing alcohol, put a little bit on cloth, and then I I, I wipe down all the edges with the rubbing alcohol and then we got we got this one right here too I'm gonna rub this one down these are two big big holes right here I've got to take care of all right now I got the tarp material and this is just old tarp material and what I'm gonna do is cut me a piece, not too big, but just about the same same length as the uh, that rip right there. I don't need it really wide because that rip isn't uh, real wide. So I'm gonna cut that right there. And then also we're gonna clean this part here with the alcohol and get all the residue off of this old piece of tarp material. So let's see, make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. And then we got the cement here. And I usually just put a little bit right there. And you don't want to smell too much of this stuff. Put some on the uh, the patch right here too. The truck stop's busy. Okay, now that I have the the glue on there and on there, I lay it on top, and then I just use the good old-fashioned foot and squish her down. Push her down. And what I'll do is I'll let that sit for a little bit and then I'll come back and uh, I'll squish on that some more once that glue starts to harden up just a little bit. So now we'll come over to this one here. Now this one's a little bigger. I'll try to get everything lined up. Some damn auto lifts tore everything up. Alright, let's just kind of get an idea how much we need to cut. Not, you know, I don't want too big of a patch because then it, you know, I want to cover the hole, but I don't want to need it, you know, like this wide. So I usually just. And that looks pretty good about right there. So we're gonna cut that one right there. And like I said, this is a big patch here. And then if you look at the material, see how there's a, uh, uh, the, the, uh, how you describe it? It's like a rough side with the indentations. I always put that down. You see this side's a little bit smoother. 
always put that down because my theory is is the glue gets down in those little grooves there and kind of holds it on there. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's my theory. And I'm just going to wipe this down with a little alcohol. check make sure I got probably a little bit too much and I don't need that much on there let's do right here all right pull the wrinkles out all right let's glue her up I'm gonna put some glue just right around the seam there a little bit bunch on here and the best time to uh, to do these tarps is when it's hot outside this glue is works really good I think I checked the temperature it's like 48 degrees out here right now so uh, we're, uh, it's not too bad but, uh, let's see here all right so now take this oops Take this, put it over that, pull the wrinkles out a little bit, and we use a foot. Squish her down. Now, this one over here has been set up a little bit, so uh, this right here is set up a little bit, so we're going to let it squish her down again. Alright. And we'll do the same thing with this one. We'll let it set a little bit. And then we'll squish it down again. So. Anyway, that's how I do my tarps. Uh, this is going to take me a little while. These tarps are... Uh, I've had these tarps about six years. These are my training tarps that I got when I first signed on. So uh, they've had some abuse. They, uh, they've been rough. But anyway, that's how I patch tarps. We're going to go through and uh, find a couple more holes. Like we got a hole right there. we got to fix that one. And uh, I noticed this patch right here is coming. This patch here is coming up a little bit. See right here. So I'm going to throw some glue up under there. So, all right, well, um, I'm going to do this and uh, talk to you guys in a bit. All right, um, I got, uh, this tarp has been drying off here, or however you want to say, drying out. I got the second tarp out. I've already patched the big holes in that. Uh, the only thing, I don't, if you'll see that one video where I got mad because there was a hole in the tarp. Uh, that's that half-ass tarp job I did right there but uh, everything else in here there was a couple big spots so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fold these tarps up um, I'm gonna try to set the camera so you can see me folding the tarps real quick I'm gonna explain what I'm gonna do all right these are steel tarps so they don't have a flap on either side uh, we're gonna take the edge bring it to the center we're going to take that edge, bring it to the center, and then we're going to do it again. We're going to take that edge, bring it to the center, that edge, bring it to the center. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the camera to where um, uh, you can see me fold the tarps, hopefully. And then um, that truck next to me is running, so I don't, I'm, I'm hoping you can hear me. Otherwise, I've been talking to myself for the last 15 minutes. So. All right, uh, let's go ahead and fold up these tarps.
Now, at this point, most guys will just flip that over and then roll it up. I'll fold it in half again, I each side in half again, and you'll see how small it gets, and that's in order for it to fit in my box. And the idea of rolling it up like this is that when it's on the load, you wanna be able to roll it out. And you'll see in the videos where I roll the tarps across the top of the load, and then it droops, and then it falls down on each side. And that's the reason for uh, rolling it up like this. So I'm gonna show you how I roll them so they'll fit in my box. A lot of guys don't do it like that, but uh, we'll see how it turns out. So you saw how I folded that in half. Now the next part, I'm gonna fold it on top of itself and it'll be a narrow strip about that long and then I'm gonna roll it up. You see how I got it rolled up in the ball like that? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna slam it on the ground sideways. And what that does, it'll squeeze it together so that, uh, that one side that's rolled out a little bit, it'll squeeze it up. So that's what I'm getting ready to do right now. All right, so we got this one rolled up. That one should be just about done drying. We're gonna roll that one up. But you can see how I roll it and it's keep it small like that. That's so it'll fit in this box right here. Just like this one right here. So we're gonna go ahead, take that one out and uh, patch that one up also. So I'm gonna put the new, uh, the one I patched up back in the box. See how I, I must have been in a hurry when I did that. Alright, so that's tarps. I'm gonna take this one, unroll it, patch it up. I'm gonna fold that one back up, fold that piece of padding up, and uh, call it quits for today. So so that's what that's what patching tarps looks like. So uh, I hope this is helpful. Uh, talk to you guys later and uh, thanks for watching.